lead. And we've got the Vikings, towering wide receiver. He's putting together one of the better seasons in league history. It's the Vikings and the Lions, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. Spread between 4th and 6th streets in downtown Minneapolis, we welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. It is week 16 of the NFL, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the Detroit Lions taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. It's been perfection so far. They come in here unbeaten at 14-0. And, and just two wins away from doing something only two teams have ever done. But the most important thing for them now is to make it to the postseason in one piece. Meanwhile, for the Lions here, they too were winners last time out. So Christmas Eve to all. What a good one we have in store as we are underway here in week 16. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. And he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. They'll start this drive out on the ground. The numbers for him from a week ago. Charles, how do you think he ran the football? I thought he definitely had his moments. I did think that they could have utilized him a little bit better, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him to see how they're going to use him this week. From the 25, here's second down and eight. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And Charles, you think about this offense, and it's kind of a tricky time of the season because you're 14-0, looking to see this one out to the end, but you start to run into situations where guys are getting a little banged up. Maybe could use some time sharing, some time on the bench, just to rest. How do you approach the rest of this regular season? I'm telling you, you don't ask the easy stuff, do you? I mean, you created a heck of a situation there, and actually you didn't create it. You presented it, and you're exactly right. It is tricky because your eye has to be on the ultimate prize, which is the Super Bowl. That's paramount. But at the same time, how much fun would it be to go down as one of the all-time great teams and join the 1972 Dolphins as the only undefeated team to win a Super Bowl? Well, the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here and under center a man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late in season number eight now out of Cal it's Jared Goff. I like this guy and the reason I do he tends to stand an even keel doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed take what the defense gives him and then he can strike at times had a touchdown pass. Yes he had an interception last week but he found a way for his team to win. Here's second and ten. First carry now for David Montgomery. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Here's Gall. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. We're always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. They'll yeah, run for the first time with a speedster, Jameer Gibbs. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Now the numbers for Gibbs from last week. 16 carries, 68 yards. Just an all right day from him last week. He really didn't break out for the huge yardage he had hoped going in. I talked with him before the game, though, and he knows this is a new, fresh opportunity. He's put last week behind him, and his focus, getting some extra yardage with every carry he receives this week. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. And they'll lead the 39 here for the first. This is third down. Here's gone. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And all the way inside the 15. 
15 before they drop him. Give him 32 on the play. A very early momentum changer there. Actually a dream killer for the defense because they forced a third down. Felt like they had a good chance to get off the field defensively. And then they got hit with that big play. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now. Gone. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Five yards. Now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now gone. Sacked right around the 17. That would pause for an injury, and it's the quarterback, Jared Goff, shaken up on the play. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Patterson's kick is good, and the Lions are going to take a 3-0 lead. And Patterson back out there to send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Vikings offense making their way back out. Now let's give you a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And as we count down through the final few weeks of the season, these guys have nothing to sweat about. They clench the top spots of the road to the Super Bowl. It runs through them. And there's a natural inclination here, partner, to say, okay, a lot of guys aren't going to play down the stretch. We've clinched. We're ready to go. But there's another part where you say, let's show the league why we're the number one team. Maybe you intimidate someone. Maybe you dissuade them from thinking that they can beat you in the playoffs by going out and being really impressive down the stretch. Absolutely. And you want to take momentum into the playoffs. There's also pride on the line for these guys individually. Yeah, momentum and pride. Yeah, I'd make room for them and put them both in uniform. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Now a second and ten. Back to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. They'll look to throw again. And that will be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. On first and ten, Bridgewater. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. A toss out right to Gibbs. And he'll be hit and dropped for a loss at the five-yard line. Give him a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw, and they get to Bridgewater. Bridgewater taken down to the end zone for a safety. So they go with the empty set, and that's the risk you run right there. Nobody was there to protect. Well, you know how most offenses have audibles, and they've changed plays when they see certain sets? A lot of defenses do the exact same thing. You go to an empty back set, they bring pressure. And boy, did it pay off in this case. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Now Osborne to return it. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Oh, 
On play action, they'll throw. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. You talk about this Lions defense. And they find themselves just outside the top 10 in the league against the pass, currently bringing up the number 11 spot. Yeah, this has been a good defense, but they're going to have to really prove it in this one because, guess what? They're facing the number one passing offense in the NFL. It's definitely a prove-it day for them. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. His 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Extra point right down the middle. And that'll make this a six-point game. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings moving away. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Detroit's offense ready to take over. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason. What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups, check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, Evaluate this squad and make the changes that you need to. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Bridgewater. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free and it's fourth down. Brandon, watching their tape from last week, I saw plenty of plays like we just saw there, forcing incompletions. It was key in their win last week. They're hoping the same thing happens this time out, too. And take it right on the 30. It's a 41-yard punt, but just a net of 31 following the run back. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. And out now come the Vikings. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated grooves. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now a dump off here complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Alexander Johnson. And the Lions will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. So the interception there. And, Charles, I'd imagine that's something you can maybe live with in December, but not come January. And I love how you make the distinction there. You're talking about regular season versus the postseason, the playoffs. Because these guys, they've already clinched a playoff spot, but they know, looking ahead, when they get into the postseason, they've got to take better care of the football because turnovers at that situation, they really become magnified. That throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw is Bridgewater. He'll go right back to Tunyon. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to bring up second down. A gain of two. 
Brings up second and at the 34 yard line. Bridgewater. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 18. 15 yards there on the catch and run. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Bridgewater now on second down. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Vikings are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. And as we've seen, points have been precious so far. They just threw some away on that snap. And look, let's face it, as we advance further into this game, that play will be on the minds of everyone who's watching it. They wonder if this is the turning point. Is this the spot where those points were given away? It could cost them a ball game. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. A tough challenge here in this one. We'll see if he can duplicate the numbers on your screen that he put up last week, up over 100 and a touchdown. We were watching tape to prepare for this game. One thing you noted that I totally agree with, great complimentary piece in the last game. You know, they were able to throw pretty well. He ran it exceptionally, and they hope to continue that same formula in this game. Complimentary with an E, not an I. That's my English teacher right there. They'll look to throw here on first down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. In motion left comes Moss. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. Second and ten. Back to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. After one, our score, nine to three. Second quarter now for Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A great effort there. His second TD of the game and 18th of the year. And they're able to add on to their advantage. I'll let you do the analysis, partner. But with every touchdown pass his young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen, and it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Detroit back in possession of the football. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Flush to his right. 
And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it's second down. To throw, Bridgewater. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Fair to say, it hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously, one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. And here now the punter, Fox, as he sends this one away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's, it's the guys simple, up huh? front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. They'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Complete, Jefferson the target. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up second down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. They'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35 yard line. First catch so far for the man who led the NFL coming into the weekend. He's got a first down. Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end or wide receiver, that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that stat, and it drives them crazy because they understand that without a quarterback, they don't make the plays that they make. They also don't feel like they get enough credit for bailing out some of the throws the quarterbacks make. Yeah, absolutely. It takes two to tango. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Yeah, he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. His 16th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings are able to add on to that lead. Well, they've done a pretty good job keeping him in check to that point, but he finally breaks off a nice run here and gets into the end zone. And it just takes one, doesn't it, partner? That can undo a lot of good work that a defense has done to that point. You break off one right there, and everything suddenly looks bad for you. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And Detroit getting set to go now. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Finds Gibbs on the check down. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. So they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, 
and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and ten. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Second and one. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Moss. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now a handoff running through the middle. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. They'll look to throw here. And incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Here's Goff now on second down. That's yeah, to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there's no way that ball was going to be caught. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Michael Parsons in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. That's three sacks now. That's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the... Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked by Tracy Walker, and the Lions are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. A tough adjustment to the NFL throughout his rookie season, and his problem with turnovers is only exacerbated by his early showing today. That's a couple for him here in this first half, and he's cleared the double-digit mark for the entire season. Detroit's offense ready to take over. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and ten. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. 
Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Now second and nine. Now gone. And that one too wide and incomplete. The Lions on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. Here's gone.
this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. And this will be out of bounds and they spot it at the at the 15 yard line. Not too bad. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Now second and five. They'll look to throw, and he slings one that's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch taken right at the 10-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Lions are going to take over with a long field ahead and a first and 10. On first and 10, Goff. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And he'll be brought down around the seven-yard line. And that's what we've seen from this defense all year long because they've been so good at finding ways to take the football away. And they just gave us another example right here. A strong defense, that's something you're going to need to rely on come playoff time. And this crew has got one. There's no doubt about that, Brandon. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And they start in the best of all positions, first and goal. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Touchdown, Vikings! A great effort there with his 28th touchdown, drawing level with Sean Alexander for the second most in a single year. And the Vikings are able to widen their lead here in this first half. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well. And by association, a bright future for the franchise too. No run back here for Raymond. This will be a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself how you show your team that you're still with it and how you continue to lead. On second down, here's Goff. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. On third down, here's Gibbs. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts 
as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And now out comes Minnesota. And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half. That's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. We'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Second and four. That's going to be caught by Moss. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 22-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, this from 39. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows it a win for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. So we are at halftime here on Christmas Eve as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in everyone to this Christmas Eve edition of the EA Sports Halftime Report. So let's get to it. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. A good performance from Bryce Young, the rookie, with two touchdown passes. From there, we move to H-Town to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Browns in that one. Amari Cooper, a touchdown reception. Finally, we're off to Atlanta to check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And that one, all tied. Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Lions offense heading out as we give you a look at the playoff race coming into the weekend in the NFC. Goff and this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Play action. It's golf. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now a give running left with Montgomery. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Here's gone. Oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. Picked 
picked off by Pat Sertan. Partner, I see you reaching for the white flag. Put it down. I don't want you throwing it, but I understand why, because if you do, you're hoping they might actually stop this game because we're blowout territory right now. That interception just surrendered any momentum they built up in the locker room during halftime. So game plan, it's in the garbage. Time to try something new in this one. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for them. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they get the other team down and they feel good about the position they're in. The obvious thing people would say is just keep attacking, but I think you also have to be smart about it. Avoid turnovers. That's about the only thing that can derail you at this point. Attack, but make sure you take care of the ball. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. And this one is right down the middle. And that will extend their lead even further. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So here come the Lions now. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles. But I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But, Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. Throwing on third, Goff. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Stuck for a loss by the safety Antoine Winfield Jr. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it brings up third and five now. Goff now looks to throw. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Still going inside the 20. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And Charles, for this offense, those interception woes they kind of had in the first half have now followed them into the second half. And for this defense, they take advantage, turn that into a pick six. And that defense is in a spot now where they're thinking about ways to close this game out. And as confidently as they've been playing, I expect them to do exactly that. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Khalif Raymond now. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. 
Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball. And it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, Goff's throw complete here on target to Tunyon. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. The rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. Well, those backups on the sideline, they got to be eagerly anticipating the fourth quarter upcoming. Look at the size of the lead, how they're moving the football. This defense really struggling and giving up plays like we just saw. Yeah, the Stars have certainly done all they've needed to in this one, haven't they? But my question is, will he be able to resist the urge to continue to run things up a bit and get his main guys a few bonus stats before he calls them off the field? And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he'll be brought down with a penalty flag on the field. It was a late decision to throw, and it might have been too late. Well, we knew he was close to the line of scrimmage, and they say he stepped over. Well, when you see him in that position, you think he's become a runner. As a DB, you start to react towards the line of scrimmage. They can often throw it over your head. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Reynolds will go in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 46, here's second and five. Gibbs straight ahead. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. 
This defense just continues to bottle up that ground game. And look, I mean, the deficit right now for this offense is so big that it might not matter. But you're still in the third quarter. They're probably nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Offensively lucky they were able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. We've seen him be good so far. He's hoping to continue that trend here in quarter number three. And typically when you see guys running it this well, they see the game in slow motion, don't they? They see the cuts happen. They see the blocks happen. They feel really good about their vision. And then they use their legs to find that open space. And he's had some good help up front to move. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be second down. He'll look to throw. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. A big play there for Minnesota. 45 yards. And that's an important completion right there because that's going to do it. With that last pass, he eclipses Peyton Manning's all-time mark of 5,477 pass yards in a single season. And I think the engravers, they can get the MVP trophy ready. This has been a year for the ages as he stands alone in single season passing. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. So attack on three more. Though this, it's just a rare drive where they did not find the end zone. Yeah, you're right about that, partner. But at this point, I don't think you're too concerned about that. You just want to possess the football for a while and drain the clock. If you can get three out of it, that's great, too. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. On first down, it's gone. It. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's gone. Here's a diving catch right side. They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. Now golf. That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. One quarter remains here in week 16. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. 
And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Montgomery hit, and the ball is loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. And even with the game seemingly in hand, they're continuing to fire away, pressing the ball down the field. Listen, it's worked all day. No reason to go away from it now. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Here's a give up the middle. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings add six more to their point total. And they're on cruise control right now here in the fourth. Extra point splits the uprights. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. And Detroit getting set to go now. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Now a first down throw. Gone. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Reynolds. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. To throw is Goff. Throw right side. This is into the hands of the tight end, Tunyon. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Goff now looking to throw. Throw caught by Raymond. That'll go for a gain of seven. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Here's Goff. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in symptomatic of how this game's been going. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Now here's a throw, it's complete. That 
Hawkins, the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And I'll tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. They'll try and run this one right up the gun. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And from the 34, here's second and four. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. There he goes left side. And he will finally be wrestled down at the Lions 17-yard line. Man, 188 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They'll look to throw now on first down. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. He'll drop to throw. And it's caught. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the run. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They'll try to run this one in. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Vikings have got it on cruise control. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Extra point right down the middle. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. No run back here for Raymond. This will be a touchback. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Golf. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Pulled in at the 24. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And, Charles, we are in the midst of a very one-sided affair. I think this is where you and I have to fill a little bit. You want to regale us with old stories of your childhood in New Paltz, New York? <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear that, but this is a perfect time for us to start listing MVP candidates, right? The best teams we've seen so far this year, the best games that we've called thus far, how we anticipate the season unfolding. We can go in so many different directions. <laughs> because the game, certainly not taking us there. Oh, I hear the remotes clicking off right now. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. And the slot man goes in motion left. 
Now fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second down and nine. And they'll keep leaning on the running game, back to the ground. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This will be third and six. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. That'll get a little bit back, give him five on the run, and they'll be left with a third and 13. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. But that shouldn't matter a great deal as they still lead by a bundle here. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Here's gone. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He's second in the NFL in interceptions, and you understand why. He plays a game of great intelligence, understands positioning, and has a great ability to break on the football when it's in the air. So fun to watch his closing speed and another example of it on that play. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. Goff on first down. And that is incomplete. Now oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Goff. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. This has obviously been a bad loss, but one of the few things they can still do is try to throw the ball all the way to the end zone and get some points on the board so they're not shut out over the final two quarters of this game. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. 
They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll power his way up near the 25. With 207 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, fans usually love to see scoring, and there was no shortage of it today. What a dominant showing from an offense that was truly playing at an elite level in this contest. Partner, this game was over a long time ago, and you noticed they did not want to slow down anything. Absolutely a dream scenario for everyone on that offense, and they took advantage of every second. Guaranteed popcorn for everyone in their film session. So for the Vikings, they are now two wins away from a perfect regular season as they run their mark to 15-0 on the year. And they'll get another home date next week as the Packers will come to town. Meanwhile, for Detroit, they're guaranteed now a sub-500 season as they fall to 6-9. And, and they'll try to get back on track next week as they head to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.